So this is a matrix and we can uh, make another matrix, let's say B. Let's say B is going to be 2 times matrix A. So we see that if we take this matrix and multiply all of its elements by 2, we're going to get this other matrix B. And now we can do operations on these matrices because they have the same size, like B minus A, or B plus A, or any no number of other uh, operations. Now, similarly to what we did with vectors, we can examine the size of a matrix. So let's just say size of A. And we see that it has three rows and three columns. Additionally, we can access an element in a matrix. So if this is our matrix A, and we want to figure out what the middle element is, we would do A, and then we would try to find what row and column the middle element of this matrix corresponds to. So the middle element here is going to be in the second row and the second column. And so that will give us 1, which is the middle element. Now let's say we want the bottom left element. The bottom left element is going to be on the third row and first column. So that should give us a value of 0, which we get. Now, like before, we can modify elements using a similar technique. So let's say we want to make the middle element a 10 instead of a 1. We can do this by accessing the middle element, a 2, 2, and setting it equal to 10. So now if we look at our matrix A, we see that A is equal has a 10 for its middle element. So these are uh, some of the basics of creating a matrix, it doesn't, you know, the matrix you create does not have to be uh, square like this. It can be, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this will give us a matrix that has two rows and five columns, as seen here. Now, in addition to just uh, creating matrices like this, we can actually obtain a matrix by reading an image in. And you, you can think of an image as a matrix. So here right now, MATLAB is set to look at a current folder. And in this case, it's looking at the MATLAB folder under documents in, on my computer here. And in my folder, I have two images. One of them is called bu underscore campus dot jpeg. So sometimes we may want to, you know, read an image in because we want to do some kind of processing in a processing on it, for example. Um, and so we need to first basically put the image into some kind of matrix. And one way we can do that is by using this command called imread. imread. Now, we want to read that into some kind of variable. So let's just call, let's just say im for image is equal to imread and then the name of the image that we're going to be reading in. So in this case, it's bu underscore campus dot jpeg. <clears throat> and let's just press enter. And now you're seeing all of these numbers appear on screen. And that's because we didn't put a semicolon on that command. And so all of the values of that image were printed onto the screen. Now, the image we, that we just read in, it actually has three color components, a red, green, and blue component. So it's actually a three-dimensional 
uh, matrix. And to simplify things, we're going to use a command that's going to average those three components, and we're just going to get a 2D matrix, which is the matrix that we were uh, seeing before. So to do that, we already have this variable called image. We can see it here in our workspace. And what we're going to do is we're going to do im underscore gray, which is going to be a new version of this image. And we're going to get the, we're going to, it's going to be a grayscaled version of the image. And we're going to use the command rgb to gray. And then im is going to be the uh, parameter. And this will get us a gray image. So let's just press enter. And again, I didn't use the semicolon, so we see all of we see the image being output to this to the command window here. So now we have this matrix I am gray and we can look at the size of it. So the size of I am gray is 571 by 651. That means it has 571 rows and 651 columns. And if we look at a portion of I am gray, so we can look at a portion of it by doing the name of the image, which is I'm gray, and then we can specify the starting row we want to look at. So let's just say 1 to 15 for the starting row, so the first 15 rows, and let's say rows 10 through 30, or 20, let's just say. So by doing this command, this is going to be looking at a small area of the image, namely the first 15 rows and columns 10 through 20. So here this is what the output is and we can see the different numbers in this patch of the image and we see that it's two-dimensional, it's, it's a matrix and so we could easily manipulate it by changing these values around if we wanted to. Now Currently, we have I am gray, which is the image that we've read in, and we we want to look at the image to see what it looks like. So we can use a command I am show. That's I am show, and we can give it a parameter, which will be the image that we just created. I am gray, and we're going to press enter to see it. So now we have, we can see this image here, and really it's just a matrix of numbers. And in particular, this image is uh, taken somewhere in Boston University. Uh, perhaps that's Commonwealth, I'm not sure. And we can actually also look at the values in the image by clicking this. Uh, data cursor, it's like a plus plus sign or a crosshair and we can click somewhere in the image and it'll show us that we've clicked on the 151st row and the 147th column and that it has this red, green, and blue component. They're all the same because they've been averaged and on a grayscale this has a value of 252. So this is the uh, image that we're looking at and we can get rid of this data point by just hitting delete. Maybe that didn't work. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. We have a uh, this figure up. So let's just close this figure. Okay. Now, 
if we want to just look at this small cross section here, we can we can just set that to be another variable. So like I am underscore gray patch equals I am gray one through fifteen, ten through twenty, and semicolon so that we don't have to look at that. Now we can do I am show. I am gray patch and the patch is really small so it's going to be hard to to see we can try zooming in on it um, that doesn't really actually help us but there is a command that will help us it's called initial magnification and let's give this a try with the parameter fit so let's try this all right so this is the patch from the original image blown up a bit and we see that it's pretty light colored and that's because the patch is has pretty high values which indicate uh, light colored. So so far we've basically shown you with images how to read them in and how to look at them and using what you've learned from matrices you can manipulate them, you can change particular elements, you can create your own matrix. So we're going to close this window and we're going to finish off this uh, tutorial by explaining the importance of the help command. So let's just clear our window here. The help command is where you type the word help in front of any command and MATLAB will tell you how to use it. So in this case we have entered I am read, help I am read, and MATLAB provides us with all this documentation on how to use it. So the first thing it says is I am read, read image from graphics file. So it tells you a brief thing of what the command does. And it tells you the different ways you can use it. So here we have A equals I am read file name, comma FMT. And the description for this is reads a grayscale or color image from the file specified by the string file name. If the file is not in the current directory or in a directory on the MATLAB path, specify the full path name. So one of the important things here is if we're going to be reading an image, MATLAB needs to know where it is. So a convenient way to do this is to put the image in the same directory where MATLAB is set to. Uh, so you can read through this and this will give you all the information you need to know about the command I am read. Usually there are some examples too at the bottom of how to use it. Um, yeah, so here's their example. I am data is equal to I am read and then they put a JPEG in. But really this is one of the most important methods for learning MATLAB by doing different commands, by doing help on different commands, and that'll teach you how to use them. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've gotten a sense of how to use MATLAB. Uh, obviously, if you're learning it for the first time, this might not be be uh, as thorough as you need, but there are resources out there that can help you learn MATLAB. Okay, thanks.